This is part four of square roots and radicals, and we're going to be dealing with multiplying square roots. First of all, recall from part one, or part two, I think, if x is greater than zero, so as long as we're not dealing with negative values of x, then the square root of x squared is equal to x. And that's to make sure that, remember when you see the square root symbol, it means the principal square root, that makes sure you don't get a negative number. All right, now we're going to have a new statement. What about if we don't have any restrictions? If I just have the square root of x times the square root of x, what does that equal? It always equals x. It doesn't matter if x is positive or negative. Okay, no restrictions on x. Now, you could also read that as the square root of x squared. That means the same thing, doesn't it? Because square root of x squared means square root of x times square root of x, so that also equals x, okay? But that's different. This is different because I've got the x squared underneath the radical sign. So it's a real slight, subtle difference. Now, it doesn't matter what's underneath there. So if I have the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 using that definition I just gave you, if you have the square root of the same thing times itself, then you have just the number underneath the square root symbol, so it's 7. Now, what if I had the square root of 103 times the square root of 103? Well, that's just 103. And in fact, if you had the square root of some junk, whatever is underneath, times the same where, times the square root of the exact same junk, you just get all that junk, whatever happens to be under there. So if I have, you know, 5x cubed y underneath the square root times another 5x cubed y, I'm just going to get the 5x cubed y. Now you could also write it like this, what if you have a bunch of stuff underneath the square root and you're squaring it, sort of like it undoes it, squaring and Taking the square root, well actually if you take the square root first and then square it, you get right back to where you started, which will be the stuff. If you've got the square root of 19 and you're squaring it, you get 19. All right, so everybody get the idea? This is the multiplication property for square roots. If a is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, and b is greater than or equal to zero, then the square root of a times the square root of b equals the square root of ab, which means the square root of a times b. Now, it's important that a and b are not negative numbers to use this, okay? We're not going to work with numbers that aren't real when there's a minus sign underneath the square root. Okay, so let's look at an example. What's the square root of three? times the square root of 7. Well, you just multiply 3 times 7 to get square root of 21. Easy, right? Now, how about square root of 2 times the square root of 8? Well, it's the square root of 2 times 8, which is square root of 16. And then what's the square root of 16? 4. Okay, what if I had the square root of 5 times the square root of 5? You know what, you shouldn't multiply those together because we can go back to our first property in this video and you've got the square root of like the x times square root of x. The answer should just be 5, right? But if you did it the long way, you might have written square root of 5 times 5, which is square root of 25, and eventually you would get 5, right? That would be the long way to do it. So if you don't have to multiply them together and then take the square root, it's much easier to just do it this way, especially if it's not so easy to multiply it in your head. Like if you had square root of 47 times the square root of 47, instead of using the multiplication property, you just think, oh, that's just going to be 47. 
why do 47 times 47 get this big old number and then try to figure out what the square root is? You're right back to where you began with. Here are some problems for you to try. So put the video on pause and multiply and then simplify if you can. All right, let's do the first one. Well, you've got to do square root of 3 times square root of 5, that's just the square root of 3 times 5 or square root of 15. Everybody okay there? All right, number 2. You're going to multiply those two together. So you have a times a to the 5th underneath the square root, which is the same thing as a to the 6th. But that can be simplified further because now you have an even exponent on your variable. So remember, you take half that exponent. So the answer to that is a cubed. All right, what about number three? Well, you've got three things to multiply. So you have to multiply two times three times seven, which is 42. So this is just the square root of 42. Okay, last one here. I'm going to go underneath, so I have plenty of room here. So I have to multiply all this together, right? So I have to do 2x cubed times 18x to the fifth. And that gives me 36x to the eighth. And now each of those are perfect squares. 36 is a perfect square, and x to the eighth is a perfect square because it has an even exponent. So the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of x to the eighth is x to the fourth. Let's do one more. How about if we had the square root of 23 x to the fifth times the square root of 23 x to the seventh. Hopefully you notice right off the bat with the, they, you have two 23's under there, so that's just going to be 23. I'm not going to multiply that out even. I'm just going to write that as 23 times 23. I don't feel like doing that multiplication, but let's do the x to the fifth times x to the seventh. So I've got the 23 times 23, right? Times x to the twelfth. So the x to the twelfth is a perfect square, and then if you're taking the square root of 23 times 23, that's just going to be a 23, right? And now for x to the twelfth, you're going to take half the exponent, so it'll be 23x to the sixth. All right, now if you wanted to multiply 23 times 23, you're perfectly welcome to do that. And then you'd have to realize that the square root of that number you get is 23. So this is how to multiply square roots and how to simplify. And now what we're going to do is in the next video, figure out how to simplify something like the square root of 8. 8 is not a perfect square, right? By using this rule for multiplying square roots. And the trick will be, there's a little teaser here, is to see if you can factor what's underneath the square root as a perfect square times something else. So 8 could be written as 4 times 2. Notice how I've written it as a perfect square times something else, 4 times 2. And if I use my rule for multiplying going backwards, that must have been the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Square root of 4 is just 2, isn't it? And voila. So that's a little preview. We're going to have to practice writing numbers underneath the square roots as perfect squares times something else, if possible. It doesn't always work. Like square root of 14, the only way you could factor that is 2 times 7, and neither of those are perfect squares. So square root of 14 is simplified, whereas square root of 8 is not. But square root of 8 can be written as 2 squared, so 2, which is simplifying. Okay, that's a little preview for you for the next video.